So this weekend, we were actually in Lalibela to see the Raccoon Churches. But I think we scored the best hotel in the area. It's called Sora Lodge, and we're literally in a little treehouse. The view is stunning. So actually here at Sora Lodge, there are many different types of accommodation, but I think we scored the coolest one. Um, so there's a, about four tree houses here. It's a little tight, but that's okay. So come inside. So we have a bed. That's it for floor one. <laughs> now let's go down to floor two. And floor two, we have our bathroom. So toilet, shower. It's a very like basic accommodation, but it's everything you need and what makes it, yes, you're in a treehouse, but like we said, the view is absolutely stunning. So this is Sora Lodge, and for $70 a night, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. to come for some lunch because we landed at like 150 1250 anyways it's like three o'clock now um and we were gonna eat at the restaurant but then we saw this really cool viewpoint we were just coming out here to have a view and now we found an amazing spot so i believe this is their actual sunset bar but we're allowed to eat lunch out here and look at the view again awesome. so from our lunch spot we were able to see some caves into the rock so I decided to like walk down and try to find them. The view in this path is just unreal and Ethiopia in general has so many more mountains than I thought like it is beautiful. The cave and then our hotel right there. What's your name? Biniam. Biniam? Yes. David. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Not sure how it happened, but we kind of picked up a guide as we were walking. Now he's saying we need to go on top of this mountain. I'm just trusting him. So we kind of walked like on top of like a massive rock, cliffs on all sides, and it gives you like a crazy 360 view of all the mountains. That's really nice. Nice to meet you. David, <laughs> thanks for showing us the spot. Very nice. So now that we're back, um, we've actually heard of a really cool sundowner spot. So it does require a tuk-tuk ride. So we're gonna see if we can grab a tuk-tuk and head there. We haven't been tuk-tuk in so long. That's true, that's true. Wow. Thank you so much. So we made it to Ben Abeba. Tracy's just getting us a tuk-tuk driver's phone number so you know we don't have to walk back. This place is just so unique. Probably one of the coolest looking bar I've ever seen. Apparently the view is amazing. Okay, so I have to say like this place is very like weird looking, kind of like futuristic, but old at the same time. Anyway, but the views that you get at the top are like crazy. There's like those little pods where people can sit. There's also places outside, but you don't want to stay outside because like, come on, man, look at this view. It's insane.
We also convinced some friends from Kenya to come to Ethiopia with us for this weekend, so that's pretty cool. Big fan of this place. Have a good night, thank you. Decent food, nice drink, good prices. Like, I would recommend just for the view. Like, it's insane. We're like in a party tuk tuk now. <laughs> Daisy, show me your dance move. <laughs> Thanks for the dance moves, too. <laughs> you, you gonna make it? No. You're doing a great job. Thanks. A good and fun first day, but mm -hmm. now it's time to go to bed because tomorrow we're waking up early oh, because tomorrow, well, it's the reason why we came here. Yes. The churches. Good night. Good morning. Very excited for today to go see those beautiful churches. And I swear Tracy and I are not doing it on purpose, but uh, we're twinning. Happens sometimes. <laughs> Stefanos? Yes. David, nice to meet you. So we've just met with our guide. We're just walking now to go get our tickets. Um, a fun fact, if you're trying to come to see part of the processions, which run from 6 to 8 on Saturday, um, the ticket office actually doesn't open till 8. So we thought it opened earlier, um, and we were planning to be there for 7.30, but it's not going to work out. All that to say, be ready and buy your ticket the night before. So what we just saw was the procession for St. Gabriel Day at Angel Gabriel Church. People will arrive sometimes uh, as early as 3 a.m. to get a good spot seating uh, inside the church. And what we saw basically on the little mountain there is kind of the overflow. So we just got our tickets. The price is $50 US or 2,714 burr plus 300 burr if you have a big camera like me apparently. So this church is a beta Menhanyaran. So this church is Beta Menyash. <laughs> so the name of this church is Beta Menhanyaran. Yes. I've been trying to say this name for like five minutes, but like I just can't pronounce it. But basically, there is 11 churches here in 10 different buildings. There's actually a double church. And the uh, roof that you see over there are obviously not original. They were built by the UNESCO to protect the church, but one of the church is actually uh, still not covered. We're gonna see that as well today. So the wood that the ladies were just um, walking by with, they use that wood to bake the bread inside and to create the charcoal for the incense. At different places around the churches, you can see like big holes in the rock opposite to those churches. And those were actually tombs for royal uh, family members. But a few decades ago, they were actually um, taken out of the rock and uh, buried underground um, in other cemetery in this area. So our guide Stefan was explaining to us basically that the, all the 11 churches were built in only 23 years and it's believed that they were built actually by King Lalibela and three different angels. King Lalibela was building or actually digging um, during the daytime and the three angels were doing the work at night time. So being up here kind of gives you a better perspective. Um, these buildings were built in a very unique way. Instead of being built from the ground up, they were built from the ground down. So they're basically dug out by hand. And because the way they are built, it is believed that there is more church to be discovered that were simply buried up with time. There's actually like tunnels everywhere inside here. So 
so the reason for the painting on the ceiling is actually to tell the different stories of the Bible because back in the days a lot of people couldn't read the Bible so that was the best way to teach them about God and the painting themselves were made out of different kinds of dirt, plants and even animal blood and finally sealed up with garlic because the sticky substance of garlic apparently is good for preserving uh, these kinds of art. I made a friend, I'm gonna call him Garfield. So all around the churches they actually have like a passage but it actually doubles as a drainage system as well. So it makes it easy to kind of walk around them. And we finally arrived to the most famous of the 11 churches, the St. George one. This is the one that you see everywhere. So behind me are actually three bodies. And these three people, they had come here, they lived here, and they wanted to die here. So they're still being respected here. Nobody touches the bodies or anything. So where it's a holy place. Now we are going to the largest market in Lalibela. It apparently doesn't have a name somehow, but I can tell you from here, it is buzzing in there. Very busy. I'm excited. So when you first come in right behind me, they call it a donkey parking lot. So that's where you can bring your donkeys, they can eat some hay. Yeah. Don't forget to pay a meter. So this market here is actually famous for selling honey. So right now we're gonna do the honey buying experience. Apparently you gotta buy a container first, but the first step is actually to taste the honey to find which one you wanna buy. This is like straight from the beehive. It's not refined, so there's still like a lot of texture in it, but the taste is fantastic. Now it's time to bargain. I'm gonna practice my bargaining skills. 200. 200 for one kilo. 250 because I like you. <laughs> 250. 500. No, one kilo, 250. It was 300 at the beginning. Your price went up. I love these places even though my bargaining skills are not very good. Perfect. Now just like that, we got some sticky fingers and some honey. We were just about to leave but we forgot to pay for the cup. Not a teeth. <laughs> This time of the day, it's a little bit too hot to walk. So back on a tuk-tuk, because this is the best way to go around. Of course it is. So we asked our guide for a good place to go have lunch, and he recommended this place, which is called Kano Restaurant, and we're waiting for a nice Ethiopian meal. That was another delicious meal. Now time to explore once again. So behind me here is actually St. Gabriel's Church. This is where we were this morning for the procession. Right now it is empty. People have left, the event is done, but it's time for us to go inside. So we were presented with two options to go to the next church, uh, one being a bridge and the other one being a pitch black tunnel. We all chose the pitch black tunnel. Um, I believe you said it's a symbol of hell. So we are not allowed to use any lights or anything. We can only use our hands like on the structures to guide our way through. It's about to get dark. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to put your right hand on the right side of the wall and your left hand on the ceilings. So if you don't reach the ceilings, that's fine, but keep it up because you wouldn't know. Uh, it gets shorter at some point, so you wouldn't know. It would hit your head. Here we go. <laughs> This is as pitch black as it gets. So 
to all these churches, the goal was to build the new Bethlehem. After the King Lalibela saw so many people dying um, while going to Bethlehem for their pilgrimage, he decided to do something similar here um, so they wouldn't have to go as far. And he was saying basically that it would be of same value. But everything here is kind of a symbolic version of what is in Bethlehem. So here is supposed to be the symbolic tomb of Jesus. So before they had an actual church build, this is actually what they used. So just the two rocks. It's a lot louder than what you think. have to take I still don't like coffee here actually or, or to be anywhere. honest the coffee here is like amazing <laughs> I really like it so Anyways. the rock hewn churches what an incredible experience mm -hmm. they are so beautiful it is so impressive to see like once you understand like how they're built like it is unbelievable yeah so it's really cool too they're kind of in like two section sections and then St. George's on its own um we kind of have different favorites yeah like St. George is really cool because it's uncovered so you can see mm -hmm. like the top design but I think one of my favorites was the last one that we saw which is like yeah. kind of dug out and kind of yeah. caved around so all the churches the tunnel just uh, overall an incredible experience oh, yeah which I really tried to do my best to give you guys like as much of interesting fun fact as I yeah. could without overloading the video with like all the fun fact that our guide so actually gave, much uh, gave us yeah so it's really worth the like added Ethiopia to your bucket list but mm -hmm. especially this place like it is incredible Lalibella. hire a guide I highly suggest it because you'll learn 10 times more now we're gonna probably go back to the same bar as yesterday because it was such an amazing spot we're gonna hope for a better sunset and tomorrow around 7 30 we're gonna leave this hotel and go to another place uh, in Lalibela about mm -hmm. an hour and a half from the uh, the hotel and it's a place that most people actually don't go so we're very excited to we that. didn't even know it was a thing until yeah. we talked to our guide, guide. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways uh kind of sign it off going a little more quiet tonight yeah. and hopefully get a sunset to the tuk -tuk. at to benabeba Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Time for another adventure. Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine. Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine. So we are currently walking up to a church called Imbrahane Christos. It was actually built in the 11th century into a cave. And apparently it's one of the most interesting church uh, in Ethiopia. So we have about 15 minutes up. If we get tired, there's a guy with a donkey there, just in case. <laughs> but we should be uh, able to make it. See you up there. <laughs> if she wasn't going to do it, I was going <laughs> to. So this church was built over a thousand years ago by the king of the same name. His palace was built here, the church here, and according to the chronicles, there's actually a lake under us. They have a small hole there, and the more they're digging, the more water they're actually finding. The only thing in between us and the lake is actually many layers of mud and wood. As you go inside the cave, on this side, we have an old cemetery, and they believe to have over 10,000 bodies uh, buried there and behind the church is actually where the king his advisor and his wife were actually buried So 
this small town here, just like the church, has also the name of the king. And this is actually where he was ruling uh, the entire of Ethiopia from here uh, over a thousand years ago. So in Ethiopia, they have a local beer. It's basically homebrew. They do it all over the country and it's very popular um, to drink it after church. It kind of smells like beer. The color is definitely not, not like what you would expect from a, like a lager or something like that. Um, also, my guide said that I shouldn't be drinking that because only locals can like kind of digest it properly, but I'm all about experiences. It's very sour and it has a little bit of a texture. It's definitely like thick. I I can't say I don't like it, but I can't say like I'm loving it either. Like I, I'd rather like a, a St. George. So just in case you're wondering, this is made out of wheat and mainly barley. And the reason why it has this color and this texture, the thickness, it's big, basically because it's not filtered. Thank you for karofi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Stefanos. It was a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. You. Well, another great weekend and real quick, yeah, so basically to cut it down is hotels, great, tree houses, definitely check out the tree houses. Very unique. Yeah, the tour were great, learned so much about the churches and the culture here, which is fantastic. We're gonna put the information of the tour guide that we used yep. down below because seriously it was a 10 out of 10. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I have to say personally, this is some of the most beautiful landscape I have ever seen. Like this Lalibela specifically is gonna stick in my brain yeah, for that. Like, 100%. Beautiful. And on top of the church, like uh, going to the monastery is actually worth it. Like it's not I too too expensive, really nice. and like it's worth the drive. First of all, because yeah. one, it's super beautiful, yeah. and second, it's so unique. The scenery on the way, man. Yeah. Okay. So I'll stop our plane about that. just landed. It's time for us to, to go. Yep. And until then, we'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>